crafting for profits in your hideout is a relatively easy way to supplement the income from your scav raids and successful PMC raids. Especially so if you're somebody who only has a few hours a week to play and you're not cranking out 20 or 30 hours like a streamer or a hardcore gamer. For me, I can make about 500K in a six hour stream with just crafts alone. If you're someone that just wants to craft one thing each time you log in, if you craft the right thing, you can make over 300K just in that single gaming session. And that's why I make these crafting videos to help you figure out exactly what to craft. This way you can take the guesswork out of how much you pay for a component or how much you sell the product for, and you can still get the most out of the time you do spend in your hideout. Now I use Tarkov Market to help display everything uh, and do the math. It's just a great interface, but I don't just use average prices. I dig into each individual craft and their components and find something that makes more sense, uh, a goal, if you will, for where you should buy stuff and where you should sell stuff. And this works out this way because there's swings in prices on how much stuff you sells for essentially. So red gun powders can run anywhere from 25 to 30K and pile of meds can be anywhere from 9K to 13K. Now, the profits I'm going to provide in here with the math is assuming that you have a level three Intel center, which is important because of the flea market reduction, and at least uh, level 10 crafting and hideout management, which most people should have if they've been focused on crafting even for a short period of time. Now, if you aren't there, you don't have those, don't worry. These crafts will still be profitable for you unless I specifically name them. But you should really push to at least get into level three because it's so important when it comes to making money on the flea market. So for the first time in a long time, we're actually gonna mix things up here a little bit. We're gonna go over to the workbench first. I've always done this last in the past. And the top craft here right now to make the most possible money you can make is actually Vogs. So it's this craft right here, the Vogue 25, where you get five fuses, five grenades, takes an hour and I, it's an hour 21 for me. It's probably closer to two hours for you. Now your goal here is to get fuses and the 40 millimeter grenades for 11,000 or less. And then once you get, you can sell them in stacks of eight, but some people sell them for more than that. Sell them for at least 25,000. This is gonna net you almost 35K an hour or about 54K on the total sale. Now, right behind this is a much easier craft and one that if you wanna do, only you wanna do this one, I don't blame you. And it's you about 30K an hour and it's round pliers. Yes, simple, straightforward craft. The key here is to get your yellow pliers for 10K or less, or just pull the ones out of raid that you find. And the beauty of this is it doesn't matter if you have Intel 3 or not, because you just sell them to therapists for 17,000 rubles, 17,010, but right there at 17,000. So there is no flea market fee. So now the next craft is one of my favorite crafts uh, for a long time, and it's made a comeback. And that is the Hawk Gunpowder Craft. This is the one that uses matches. Don't do the one that has an OFZ shell in it. So the goal here is to get your blue gunpowders for less than 13K, your greens for less than 31, matches for less than 12, and then when you get a big enough stack, sell your red gunpowders, your Hawks, for 27,000. Now you can push this even higher. I have been able to push 29, 30, sometimes even 32 with the Hawks, depending on the time of the night or which day it is. But 27, even at 27,000, it's gonna net you 30K an hour almost. Now, along with this, I wanna point out another craft that is pretty good. Uh, and we gotta change prices here real quick because you, you, buy, you buy low and sell high, right? Um, and it's the Eagle Gunpowder Craft. Now, to do this, you need to have level three Peacekeeper and have Spa Tour Part Two done. But you can buy the grenades from him um, in dollars, but it's $88, so 8,800 rubles. Same thing with the M18 smoke grenades at $3,900, because it's 39, uh, or 3,900 rubles, because it's $39. Then you sell your Eagle or your green gunpowder for 34,000 rubles. This is going to net you about 26,000. And the thing that's so nice about this craft is you can just buy the components off the trader. The prices aren't ever fluctuating. It's kind of a lazy man's craft, if you will. And that's why I like it, because it's an easy cycle. You buy the components, you turn them into Eagle gunpowders, and then every three or four days, sell your big stack of Eagle gunpowders for 34, 35, maybe even 37K, and just make a bunch of money doing that. Now with the workbench out, uh, we'll continue this whole process of shuffling things up and I'll run over here to the nutrition unit. Uh, and this one sucks, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. If you don't have Intel 3, you might as well not even bother crafting here unless you're looking for tasks or you get like a non-found and raid sugar or some other non-found and raid item. But if you have Intel 3, there are a couple of things you can get away with here, and it is primarily the max energy and vodka. And vodka requires a little bit of work, but I'll show you what it takes. So with the max energy, uh, get your Tarcolas for less than 15,000, your coffee less than 20, buy your waters from Therapist. I you, I use used ones all the time, so your price is technically a little bit lower, but we won't get into that with this. And then sell your max energies for at least 16,000. This is gonna net you only net you about 3K an hour or 5,000 profit to each craft, but at least you're doing something in here if it's just letting, if it's just sitting still. Now for me, the primary craft I'm doing is vodka, but it takes patience and quite a bit of work. Uh, try to get your moonshines for 220,000 or less. 
waters from therapist again, uh, and then sell your vodka for at least 32,000. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you can't sell for 32,000. Trust me, I do it every night. Well, let me go look here at my character screen real quick. If you go look, I craft this holiday cup and all I do is pile it full of vodka and I'll sell anywhere from 40 to 60 each night. And I kind of look and see where the market is. Sometimes it's 32, sometimes it's 33. There's been nights where I've sold it for 38. And you can see here, if, if I go to 38,000 on this, you know, now you're making 40,000 rubles per hour, you're 60,000 on profit. So you can see how much potential there is. And, they, and vodka is real popular because people use it for the thick weapon case, or I'm sorry, thick item case trade, and they buy it in big stacks. So guys will see a stack of 30 and they'll even go a little more expensive just because it saves them time. This also gives you a, a really good advantage of leveling your flea market rating, which is a big reason when I show people, they ask me, you know, how do I have a high flea market rate? I'm at 50 now. I'll have my fourth slot at 70. And a big part of that is because of that vodka craft. Because each time I do it, it's like 0 0.06 or 0 0.07. Um, each individual craft, each 10 vodkas is like 0 0.06 or 0 0.07 points. Now, the water collector, a uh, little bit different of a deal here. Um, I, the reason I want to talk about it is because the huge argument is always around fuel. It should always be running. You should always be putting water filters in here. And yes, I know it's not super efficient because it'll sit there and not churn anything if you're not there to collect. But on a perfect calculation world, this thing makes 12K an hour, even with no bonuses, without an Intel 3, without any hideout or skill management, uh, crafting or hideout management skills taken into account. Now with the skills we put in an Intel 3, you're pushing 15K an hour. And with the hideout skills and everything applied, fuel only costs about 4K an hour. So you only need to be about, what, 30, 40% efficient with your collecting of your, your waters and it more than covers the cost of your fuel for everything else in the hideout. And then an interesting thing with the water collector, you know, if you sell your purified water right now at like 110 to 120,000, you're paying a flea market fee of uh, about 11%, 12% based on your skills. If you use it to craft moonshine, that flea market fee drops to about nine and a half, ten percent You're paying a little bit less on the flea if you're using your fountain raid uh, crafted super waters to make moonshine versus selling them direct. Now I sell them direct because I use that to bump up my flea market rating again. And then I buy my super waters more complicated deal, but uh, that's about the only way that you're gonna make money on the boost generator as well. This thing is basically a break even right now. Now, if you can get your sugars for under like, you know, 42K or your super water's under 110, you will make a little bit of profit here. But the, the Fierce Hatchling Moonshine is really good at leveling up your flea market rating. Or if you find a way to, a cheeky way to get your sugars cheaper, this is a place to use them. Now over at the med station, it's not quite as bad as a nutrition unit, but it's also not a really big money maker right now. The best craft here, quite simply, is pile of meds, and it's probably going to be that way for the whole wipe. Now, obviously, the big part of this component or this crafting is the augmentin. Shoot for 19K, but sometimes you get lucky, get it 15, 17K. It's just that much more money you're going to make. Get your AI2s for 45, 4,600, uh, your bandages for about 2,400, and then sell your pile of meds for at least 12,000. This is going to net you over 8K an hour um, and a lot more if you start pushing your pile of meds higher. Sometimes you can get lucky and get 13 or even pushing 14,000. Uh, you just kind of have to keep an eye on it. Now, the only other alternate craft right now right now that's in here that is real stable is the AI2, but I got to change something in here real quick uh, on the pile of meds because you use pile of meds to craft the AI2s. Now, the goal here is to get your pile of meds for less than 9,500. You want to buy them for less than 9,500. Don't use the ones you crafted. That's not something good. Looping crafts like that in the same module. And while this is only going to net you, you know, probably about 8K an hour, it's not a lot. If you catch meds a lot cheaper, if you catch them like 9,000 or 8,500, that really starts to jack up the price of how much you make and at least keeps something going. This is what I do. I buy a pile of meds when I see them under 9,500. I use those to craft AI2s and then I craft pile of meds with everything else. And that's my cycle to rotate to level up my crafting skill. Now, the bonus craft in here, if you will, is the Propital craft. We'll talk about it real quick. Again, pile of meds for 9,500. Ibuprofen for 40,000. Sometimes you can get a little bit less with the barter, but you're almost always buying it off the market for like 40, 41, 42. But the key is, is my golden stars don't cost anything because I use them. So I get them down to, you know, two out of 10 or nine out of 10, or I'm sorry, one out of 10. And then I count that cost as just a sunk cost in my raids. It's just a consumable like ammo or anything else. But that one out of 10 golden star can still be used to craft propitols. And then once I craft those, I'll, you know, I'll sell them for 18, 19, sometimes 20,000. Let's put 20,000 in here. That's a bit of a reach. And you're going to make about 36K an hour or 65,000. Uh, that doesn't totally cover the cost of the golden star, but it's almost this zero cost loop of paying for most of your golden stars. And now you're running golden stars for like 20, 30K. And keep in mind that whole partial used med thing that works for everything. IFAX, if you have like, 
20 out of 300 IFACs or whatever. You can use those to craft AFACs and actually make money. But with that out of the way, let's get to the other really kind of good uh, module. And it's across from the workbench. It's the laboratory. Say hi to our pretty lady in the blue room, as we always do. And the big ones here are fabrics. Probably doesn't come to surprise to anybody. Now, I know the aramids at the top, but we're going to talk about that in a sec. It's kind of got some complication to it. The best craft in here right now is also one of the simplest. Just buy your four slings off of Ragman for just over 2,000 a piece, and then try to sell your Cordura for 21, 22,000 if you can. Now, this is going to net you 15K an hour, and you can actually push Cordura into the 30K range if you sell on the Ragman resets. And what, what I mean when I say that is, let me pull up Ragman here real quick. You see how in an hour and 24, he resets? Well, that's when all of these barters, uh, sp specifically the slick plate carrier, that is when this resets and people buy up their materials to do that barter. And as you can see, it takes six. So each person that does this is burning six Cordura. So it'll burn through the prices really quick because let's go look. Right now we're looking at it, Cordura's like 18, 19K, which is still okay, that's not bad. But this will definitely push down into the 30K range very easily when he resets, especially late at night. Now this principle also applies with Aramid, but it's a little more complicated. Um, you wanna get your packas for 24,000 or less, and it doesn't matter what condition they're in. And then same deal, sell, sell your Aramids on the resets for 19K, which Aramid sell as cheap as like nine, 10, 11K most of the time, but again, on resets, they spike. I actually sold like a stack of like 30 of them uh, yesterday for almost 30K, so I made a ton of money there. Now the trick with the packas is getting them under 24,000. It doesn't happen all the time. When I see them, I snatch them up. They take up some inventory space, but I'll show you how I find them. First off, I go check fence. And I come in here, I go to armor and I look and I see if there's any in here. And right now there's not. You got 28, 25, 25, and those, you could buy those if you wanted. I mean, it's kind of pushing the boundaries, but it'll still work. But the other way is just to look on the flea market itself um, and just make sure you have your filter set right with minimum condition and operational only. Oh, I link searched. Uh, let me go back here real quick. I link search that filter by item, min condition, operational only. There's none here. You'll see them sometimes 20, 25,000. But then the last way is actually through the barter uh, with Ragman. And it's not super, super consistent, but if you can get these half masks for less than 8K, which right here, there's a bunch of them, 8K, you need three of them for the barter. There's your 24K right there. And if you go through that whole process, it's going to net you 18, 19, 20K an hour. And again, if you can start pushing these, let me bump these aramids up into, you know, where they're a really high price, like I was selling the other day, let's say even 29,000, uh, you know, you, now you're talking over 50K an hour. So that's pretty hefty profit if you know how to shop your components just right. Now, the last one is kind of a every other day or every two day craft, at least for me. I use my empty fuel cans. Now, those aren't worthless. Um, you know, you can sell them to therapists for 3,000 rubles. So that's what I put in here. But you want to get your screw nuts for 15,000, your bolts for 25, and your metal parts for less than 13. And then you just sell the grenade case to therapists, and it's going to net you, it's 90K, it's 5K an hour, but it's, it's about 90K in total profit. And like I said, it's just every couple of days, but it's what I do with my empty metals. Now, the Intel Center will hop in there real quick. Uh, go look at that. It's pretty straightforward and simple. It's just thumb drives. You can craft VPXs and make money, but it's not much. I'm just always rolling thumb drives here, even though I miss out on that one point for cycling crafts. And that's just because of the length of time, because it's 57 hours and 48 minutes for the VPX, even with just a little bit of skills in here. Uh, the key with the flash drives, though, I mean, you, you can get your components at market prices. It doesn't matter if you're paying 45 or 50,000 for G Phone X's or, you know, 13 or 16,000 for the G Phone and SSDs, kind of whatever, right? That's not those, those numbers don't really matter. What's really important is what you do with your flash drives. Don't sell them on the flea market, especially for like 50, 55K, because you're losing money. Not only are you paying a flea market fee, there's something better to do, and that is go over to Jaeger. Um, let me hop out of this real quick. We'll go over to Jaeger and do the dag, the dog tag case barter. This dog tag case sells for 195,000 rubles to therapists. So it takes three of them. You do the barter, you sell it to therapist, and that's that. Your dog, your uh, thumb drives are now worth 65k in the math that self without a flea market fee. So the fees calculated in here just because how the, the computation works, but at 65,000, that means you're going to be pushing 95, almost 100,000 rubles of profit each time you do this craft with that barter. Now, the last little blurb we'll talk about here, except I accidentally backed out, is the scav case. It's not really a craft, it's, this is just gambling, right? But I get asked a lot, so I just kinda wanna put it in here for everybody's information. Uh, the three primary ones that I run are Moonshine, Intel, and the 95K. Moonshine gets you streamer items, you know, some of the stims, things that you might need for tasks. I've always, I've gotten every one of my tank batteries that I've ever used in every wipe out of the Moonshine. I've never carried them out of raid for the task. But on top of that, it'll get you your rare stims. You can get armors that you can't buy, like hex grids and things, stuff like that. That's what Moonshine's for. 
Intel gets you keys. And it's always worked great for me. Again, this is gambling. It's random. It doesn't matter what I've gotten. Your results are going to be different. It might even be better. But I get, you know, black key cards, Marin keys, cottage keys, things like that all out of these, you know, quest keys and stuff like that all the time that I can either use or I can use to barter for. But if you don't want to fork over 200,000 plus each time and gamble, I don't blame you. The 95K uh, run is kind of a combination of the two of them. It's loot pool is smaller, it's not as good, but you still can get items like batteries and really good keys. I, I know guys that do nothing but run 95Ks and get green key cards every wipe. So just keep that in mind. There is no best run because it's a complete gamble, it's random. But there is kind of proclivities to which one you run and what you kind of want to get. But we'll wrap the video up there. I want to do a quick shout out uh, to my music. Go check that out, links down in the description. My music, uh, we've got 100 songs on six albums, more coming listen to it on spotify it helps out the stream it's free to use uh, again my music uh just want to do a shout out point it out in case you didn't know it was there thanks for watching i hope you got some value out of the video and we'll see you in tarkov